Hello, this is Katie. So today we're going to be looking at working with Delica beads and some agate slabs. So they're not really a combination that you would put together due to the size, but they really do work together really well. And I've incorporated lots and lots of different stitches. So just quickly before I start, I just want you to take you through the rest of the jewellery and see what stitches we've used. So for the ring, so the ring sits really nicely on your finger like so, so it's quite a statement ring. So this is all brick stitch here, so this is a traditional one that you would use with your Delica bead. So we've got the brick stitch ring and then on the band I've actually used a odd count peyote, so that's another stitch for you there. And then the earrings, again they are a brick stitch. And then we've got the pendant. Now the pendant is the, 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 the actual bale is the design that I'm going to show you today. So the bale can be used like so, so like this bale, or I've used the same design and created connectors. So I'm going to show you how to do both. And in the bale, what I've done is I've used two different stitches to create a, a quite simple bale, but it does look quite complicated if I bring it up to the camera there like so. So you can see you've got plenty of room to pass your chain or even some more like a seed bead rope in between there as well. But what we've done is actually used a herringbone stitch. So this is the one coming down the front here. So this is going to help you understand the demonstration a little bit better. So this is a herringbone stitch down the front and along the top and along the back as well. So you could actually make this fully reversible and do different colours, maybe a colour on each side. And then in between here we've used a basic peyote stitch. So I'm going to show you how to create this nice shaped bale and then how to connect them together to make the more statement type necklace. So I'm just going to move that out of the way. So this is what we're going to be creating. So I've just got one more piece to put together. So you can see they're quite mobile so you get a lot of flexibility with them. And I've, what I've done is I've actually created a connector with these two. So these two are very slightly smaller than these ones here. I will go through all the numbers with you as we go along. But we're going to make that last connector, that last bale piece, because these are actually drilled both ends, which is fantastic. It gives a, another versatility to this kit. And we're going to create another bale, but it's actually going to create a connector rather than a bale this time. So I'm just going to move everything out of the way and we'll get started. Okay, so I threaded my needle. I'm using a wildfire thread. I'm using the grey colour. Now it's up to you which, whatever colour you want will work, especially with this kit. I don't think it's really going to matter which colour you actually use for this because there's not a lot of thread that shows in any case. So I'm using the wildfire, I'm using the grey colour and I've got around about just over around about a metre to 120 centimetres of thread is sufficient. We're not going to be using a stop bead on this and then we're going to be using the beads from the kit. Now this dark tone, that's going to call, that's going to be used on these kind of stripes, so the herringbone types, the herringbone type of weave. And then the lighter tone, this pale pink, beautiful, pretty tone, that's going to be used on these, pe these peyote sections here. So those are the, your two colours that we will be using. So to begin with, the actual central section here, right at the top, is actually the um, the pink. So so that, that paler colour, just the very first little bit there, you can see that there on the top. So that's the colour we're going to pick up first and we're going to create a little right angle weave just to start with. So a right angle weave is a little bit like it, like it says, um, it's four beads with four angles. So you're going to have like four walls to each each side of this little weave that we're going to just create. Like I said, no stop beads, so we're just going to leave a short tail. It's not going to be a tail that we're going to use for anything, so don't worry about that. And what I'm going to do is I've added four of those pale Delica beads and I've come all the way through and back through all of those beads. And then pulled that round in a loop. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to chase that all the way around again. So I've got another layer of thread all the way around there. So follow that round until you come back to the beginning again. So just finish that last one. So that will give your wrangled weave a nice shape because it's nice and firm because it's got lots of thread through it and it's also going to give it lots and lots of strength. Okay, so what now we need to do is I'm just going to pull the camera in just a little. So now we need to start making that herringbone weave. So the herringbone weave is going to go in between each of the gaps in our 
um, right angle weave. So we're going to pick up two of our darker colour, which is going to be the herringbone. My thread is exiting, just turn that over, it doesn't matter which way you do this, I just do it in a way that's more comfortable with the direction that you prefer to go. So my thread is exiting this bead here, and I'm going to pop my size 12 needle through the next bead. Using a size 12 will be a lot, lot easier for you on this, uh, this particular design. So what you're going to do is you're going to kind of pull that in and what you want them to do is sit in that kind of herringbone, slight angle to each other pattern. Now the first row is the most awkward, so they kind of just need to sit next to each other. They won't sit perfectly, but don't worry, they will do eventually because they, they kind of pop into position eventually. So picking up another two, we've come through the next bead, pick it up another two and come through the next bead. And again, once we kind of get down to that short piece, we just kind of want to manipulate them a little bit just to kind of get them to sit next to each other in that herringbone fashion. And again with the next two. So it's adding two at a time at this stage and through the next bead. And pulling them through and again you will have to kind of manipulate them and kind of ask them to sit nicely on this one. As you work on everything kind of clicks into position it's just this very beginning row you can see them they're trying to they're all kind of at the corners now There's just this last one to go. So I'm going to add those next two beads and come through the next Delica there and again just manipulate them and get them to sit nicely. So then we're going to come up through the next dark coloured Delica bead. So this is like kind of like your step up. So coming up to work on the next row. And just as I come through there, that one decided to sit perfectly for me. So you can see that there, that's what we want it to look like. It's like a little flower just at the very beginning there. So now whenever we're on top of a Delica, the darker ones, we're going to add two beads. So this is going to be your herringbone stitch. So we're on a herringbone stitch. So we're coming out of this first bead, adding two beads onto our needle and then down through the next purple one there. And then pull this through. Oops, it's caught on my mat. And pulling them down and they will nicely, they should sit a little bit better. Now occasionally because they're delicate and they've got that angle to them which gives them their amazing shape sometimes they do not want to sit properly but they will do it the more you work along now what we want to do is add a pink delica in between to get across to this next one here so i've added a pink delica to my needle my thread is exiting at the bottom of this row of herringbone and i'm going to come up through the next darker delica and then this one, it looks like it's not going to fit, but if you just kind of hold that in your fingers and give that little tug, it kind of snaps into place. Okay, now we're going to work on this one. So we're working on top of purple beads. So we're going to pick up two of our purple beads and down through the next purple bead to create that herringbone stitch. And pull through. And just get them to sit nicely. And again, we're going to pick up a paler pink one and work to the next set of darker beads which are going to be ready for your herringbone and again it might not want to sit perfectly but we'll just give it a tiny tug and it kind of snaps into place pick up two of your purples because we're on top of one of those now so we've got two on our needle and then down through the next herringbone stitch and asking them to sit nicely again and we're just going to work around until we get to the next side so picking up a pink through giving that a little tug if you need to kind of just squish it in your fingers that kind of helps as well to get it to sit in place for this and then adding another two of our herringbone now you can see we've come right back to the beginning we've not quite finished the row yet because we've got another pink to add just get them to sit a little bit nicer. There we go. So we've got another pink to add because we need to match up with the other side. So we've got to put that little pink in there. But this time we're going to step up. So we're going to go through into that bottom herringbone. 
and then up to the top one so that's our step up there there we go so I've got my pink on my needle here and then pulling that through and that's going to pop that pink into that space where we need it and also step up so you'll see that step up again as, as we work on okay so now you will think wow this is sitting it's all sits really tight and if you actually pinch that a little bit now you can see that shape trying to form so don't worry don't worry about trying to keep it flat or anything like that what we're actually wanting is it for it to form a shape and that's why it is so tight and it will form the shape okay so we're going to go in with the next row so we're going to pick up two of our darker color because we're on, a, on top of a herringbone and pull this through that's that really nicely now this time we're going to do the peyote so the first one we just added one pink so this time we're going to pick up a pink through the pink so through that pink so that would essentially be if we were doing basic peyote a sticky out bead and pull this through and that will click into place there and then we're going to pick up another pink and then come up through the top of this pirate, this um, herringbone weave here. So we're working on that top row of herringbone and peyote in between all the gaps. And give that a bit of a tug. Don't worry if it, you kind of flatten it out when you tug it, but then you'll, you'll pull it back into place. And it, don't worry if it kinks a little bit in the middle. Again, we're coming back to our purple. So we're onto the herringbone again. And through. And just position our beads so they're going to sit nicely like so and we've got one pink in the middle so we need to add a pink at either side to create that peyote so picking up a pink through the pink in the middle just making sure your thread doesn't get caught on anything and then picking up another pink and then up through the top of the next herringbone stitch and picking up two because we're on top of a herringbone so picking up two of our darker color through the next herringbone down through the next one and getting those to sit nicely again and picking up a pink through the next pink And pulling that through and it's, it's quite a nice feeling as they kind of click into place it means that it's all going right so picking up that one there so we're coming down to this last side again so we're picking up two of our herringbone through the other side of the herringbone pulling that through and then picking up a pink through that pink that's in the center there Did you hear that click in there and then we're going to do that step up again so you'll know when it's a step up when it just looks a little bit different to the other ones because it's got that extra one when you're looking back here so we're going to make sure that we go in when we're doing the step up so we're going to go not going to go in through the top of a herringbone we're going to be going one step down and then we know we're stepping up to the right position and if you do go it onto through the wrong part of the herringbone you will notice quite quickly that it's not sitting right so just kind of look back if it doesn't feel like it's right now what i've done there is i've given it a really good tug and as you can see there if i lay this down I don't know whether you'll be able to see that it's starting to bend on its own and that's what we want so don't worry it's not misforming or anything and in fact it's easier for you to bead if you let it bend as well so we've got that shape in there you can see that that's the middle part of the bale that top middle part and it's all starting to form so we're going to go around again because now it's starting to bend it kind of all sits where we want it to sit and do that step up again so we're coming out of a herringbone we're going to pick up two of our darker colour again down through the other side of the herringbone like so and now this time we've got more of the pink to add more peyote because we've got two beads on each side so we're going to pick up a pink through the first one so it's just basic peyote we go through, pick up a bead and through the sticky out bead 
pick up a pink and through the sticky out pink and then you're going to pick up the last one so if it's not sitting right There we go, clicked it into position and it will start to twist on its own from this row. So picking up the next one and you're going to go through just the very top of that herringbone there. So just through that very top one. It's only when we're stepping up that we go through two sets of herringbone. So you can see now, now it won't go flat. So you can actually feel that it's, it's, it's really kind of forming that shape. So again, we're on top of a herringbone. So we're going to come down through the opposite side of the herringbone after adding two of our delicate beads. And again, just taking your time each time and making sure that your beads are positioned the right way. And then we're going to add a pink through the first sticky out pink. And pull through and then make sure it clicks into position. That's the beauty of a delicate that because it's got those, those, it's a cylinder and it's got those straight edges, it will kind of click into position and make a very uniform shape for you. And remember, we're only coming up through the very top, the very top of the, the next set of herringbone to fill that gap. Like so. Just make sure you keep your little tail bit out of the way. That's just going to get cut off at the end because we went through that central bit so many times and we've added beads since. It's going to be nice and strong and secure. So again, we're on top of a herringbone. So we're going to pick up two and through the opposite side of the herringbone. So if you don't know what a herringbone stitch is, um, I will show you a little bit closer in a second so you can see the design that the herringbone makes. So now we pick up a pale pink through the next pale pink. So back to peyote now, just making sure it doesn't catch on anything. And if you need to kind of hold it in your hands and give it a good tug for it to click into shape, that's fine. And then picking up another pink and through the next sticky out pink. And then picking up another pink and through the next sticky out pink. So you can see we're coming through to the last row now because I can see that step up. I can see that, that greater distance that we've got from this one that, that we just had here. So I know I'm coming up to my step up. So I'm going to pick up two of my darker colour. I'm going to come through the next one. So I've added my herringbone on there and then we're going to pick up a pink through the next pink and pull through and through the next pink and pull through and then we're going to do that step up. So I've picked up the pink and I know because I want this one to sit here I know I've got to come up through two of that herringbone because this is my step up. So these are the first ones I added on the last row. So I'm going to come up through both of those beads like so there and come all the way through and let that one click into place. So now you can see it's forming that shape all on its own. I'm not having to bend it at all. So this would be a very, very tiny bale for something if you wanted to make it that small, which makes it nice and versatile like so. And so what we need to do is if I just show you a little bit closer, this is the herringbone stitch. So this is the one we're going to count. So a herringbone is where it kind of sits in a little V. So what we need to do is we need to count just the, not the, not this very beginning one, but the actual um, herringbone stitch a little bit further, further down, the darker colours. So we're going to count six of them. So at the moment we've got one, two, three, four. So it needs another two rows before we um, have enough to make one of the connector 
ones. If you're just making a bale for a pendant for the size that's, that's on, on this one here, if you're just making this bale here, this um, the actual darker colours is a count of eight. So, so that count determines what the, the actual size of your bale. So we're going to work on that until we get to six. So I'm just going to move over to this one that I've already prepared. So this one's already got six. And you're just going to continue doing that and each time, each row you will add more um, more of your pinks for your peyote just each time as it, as it goes along. So once we've got to six and you'll finish on a step up and you'll be coming out of one of your um, herringbone pieces. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six and then that, like we said that central one is a pink bead so we don't need to count that. So now I need to finish off so it's got a nice end and then it gives us a way of connecting them together as well. So this time we're going to do one more run round but this time instead of doing a herringbone we're just going to add one bead. So one of the same colour and through. So it's just going to be one bead, one delica, sat there at the end like so. So then we're going to follow on with our peyote all the way around. So you'll see this a little bit better now. It's a, a little bit uh, wider. So we're going to pick up a pink and through the next pink. Pick up a pink and through the next one. And another one. So we're going to work this all the way around. And picking up another one through the next, through the next, and then through up through the top of that herringbone side. And again, we're just going to pick up one and through the top of the other side. So that's just going to put one single bead. And what that bead will do is it will sit at a different angle to the rest of them. And that's going to aid us in uh, attaching, attaching to our pendant and attaching our connector together. So I'm just going to work around and work all of these peyote stitches in until I get around to the other side. And then I'm going to show you how to connect it to your pendant, to your stone your beautiful agate and how to connect together. So working all those stitches, just making sure you pick up the right bead because I think with something like this, if you pick up the wrong color, it will be quite visible. Even though they're really complementary tones, I think the, the wrong color will stand out like a sore thumb. So, and then again, once you get to the herringbone, just picking up a single bead and through and again picking up a pink and through so this is just your basic peyote stitch nice and simple but it does make a great shape with this this design and the way that the herringbone and the peyote work together really well it's a nice way to it's a nice nice to know you can use your delicate beads with lots of the classic stitches and they work in a really nice way together so I've worked my way all the way around. I'm just about to put my last one in and just, just wanted to point out that remember there is no step up on this last one because we only added one bead at that very beginning. So this time we're just adding a pink and coming through that bottom delica, the bottom part of the herringbone and there's no extra bead to come up through. So there you go, that's all put together, that's fine. Now what you can do is because I know this is super secure on the inside and I know this isn't going to go anywhere. I can snip off inside that little tail. And now we're ready to start to attach everything together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach the actual bale to the pendant first and then attach these together. So I'm just going to pull that out a little bit. So what we need to do is attach to the pendant first so that these are together and it makes life a little bit easier and then we're going to attach these ends together here. So it is quite, they, they are quite heavy against it while, whilst you're actually stitching so you will have to work quite low down and um, hope that uh, you're able to work with it um, against your mat because that makes it life a lot easier. So what I've done is, sorry, 
I've just come through that bottom bead. So I've just come through one of the bottom beads. So I always work on, on the point that, uh, that your thread finishes on. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up through the opposite side. So through that hole there and pull through. And then I'm going to come through. So this is the way, why we changed that direction We added one bead because now our bead is, um, we're able to go across it. So now I can come through this way. So I've come through that, that one there. Don't worry, we'll tighten it up in a second. Now I can go back through and I can turn this over. So it's still loose at the moment, but this time when I pull all this together, it will tighten everything up on it. So I'm just gonna give that a good pull. So that's tightened up on there and now I've got my two. So you can see this one's slightly bigger at this side. This is the connector size. So this is the six and this is the eight. And I'm gonna go through that bottom bead again. And I'm gonna do this a few times just so that I know, because like I said, it's, it is a heavier gemstone and we're working with a thread just so that I know. Now this is in there, I can pick it up a little bit easier. I know that it's got lots of thread and each pass is gonna add extra strength so coming through going through that bottom bead that single bead that we had there and through so and then through again so i know i've got a few passes through there now and then just for extra security what i'm going to do is i'm going to come around this little trio here so i'm going to go up through this it might be a little bit difficult because they are so tightly packed together and so beautifully knitted together so this is why we use a size 12 needle so we're going to come through there I'm going to skip my thread across to the opposite side of this little triangle and pull that through there so you can see my little loop of thread there and that's going to pull through in between there just give that a good tug and then I'm going to come through that bottom bead again now I'm going to pass my needle through to the opposite side once again whoops so pulling that through to the opposite side and again I'm going to come I'm going to pass through that bottom bead and I'm going to make that little triangle again so I'm just going to do that, I'm going to go around that little triangle again and then the other thing that I'm going to do, I'm just going to work up my thread just through the bead path because I've still got plenty of thread here to use. So I'm going to work up through that bead path and work towards this point here, so either one of the, the ends that we've got here, these corners, and those are going to connect and I'll show you how to connect those together in a few seconds. So I've, what I've done is I, I went around that the little section again and then I just worked up. And when I say work up following your bead path, I mean, don't just come up in a straight line because you'll be able to see thread in between all these gaps here. So just make sure you kind of zigzag because it's a peyote, zigzag all the way through those beads, just one at a time. And then what you want to be doing is exiting through this, um, this very end bead that we've got, that one, that single bead on the end. So you want to be coming out either side of that bead. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a little right angle weave between all these and we're going to have to pass through them a little bit more. Again, it's a heavier gemstone, so we want to keep it as um, sort of immobile as possible, but you will have to pick it up at some point. So what we're going to do is we're going to add one of our darker colour because it matches the colour that we've got at the very end there. And then we're going to come up through the opposite side here. So we're going to bring that together and then we're going to add another bead and we're going to come down through the opposite side so i will show you this from the other angle in a few seconds so you can see that right angle weave so we're just going to come through this one here but i just want to pull it all together first so i'm just going to obviously it's still loose but you can see i've kind of come through if i just pull that apart a little bit you can see there's a bead on each side of them and i'm utilizing those single beads that we put on each end there so now we need to pull that tighter and go through that circuit a few times so it's going to be kind of one of them where you just kind of need to figure out how you're going to hold it but this is kind of working so we're going to make sure we're catching each bead each time and we want them to come together and be nice and tightly sat together in that right angle weave formation. So once you kind of get a few rows of thread in, it 
all kind of sits together really nicely like that. There we go. So pulling that together and making sure we've got a good few runs of thread through there. And then again, like we did with the, um, with the little triangle that we went round at the other end, sort of this with this little part here, we want to go through and make sure we strengthen away from that bead as well. So that means going through these sections here. So just bringing your, your thread around. So at the moment I can open it up this way. So I can go through and strengthen up here and here and then I'm going to work my thread over to the side and do the same with the opposite side. So you can see I've finished finishing off this side here and I've, all I've done is worked my thread all the way across again following my thread path so it does take a few minutes just to get the way across but it's worth doing it properly so we can't see any of that thread. And now I'm ready to join this side up so it's the exact same thing again. And we're just going to pick up a Delica of the same colour. I'm exiting one of the single Delicas that we added and I'm going to come through the opposite side. Again, picking up our last Delica and coming through this side. So we're creating that loop all the way around and we've used four beads. So we've used the bottom ones from either of the the connectors or the bales and we've added a bead at each side so then it's just a matter again once again of pulling all that together and going through each of these a few times and then again it will be more awkward to do this time but I will show you again where I mean um, once we've been through these a few times um, the little section that we want to strengthen and make sure that we're not kind of attaching everything and, and relying on one bead right at the bottom there. So I'm just going to come through just once more. It's worth just spending a little bit of time just making sure you've got plenty of thread through these kind of more weaker sections as, as they would be seen. Because once these are kind of all beaded together this is like super strong but this is where any weakness would be. So I've come around there, I think I've gone around about three times now. So now you're going to be working kind of on this inside bit here. So on here again I will just show you, you're going to be working on this little set of three. So you'll have the same little set of three inside here and it's this set of three you just want to go around there a couple of times on each side and then just work your thread in and snip that off. So I'm just going to finish that off and then I'm going to show you how to put the whole thing together to make the necklace. So we're ready to put our necklace together and create the finished piece. So I've got two lengths of the chain from the kit. So these lengths are about 30 centimeters each. These are going to double up so it'll be it'll kind of suit the, the style the more chunky design of the of the necklace. I've opened pre-opened two jump rings and I've got my clasp. So we'll just do work with one at a time. So we're going to work on one of the ends. So what we need to do is pass our chain through. So passing our chain through and levelling those up a little bit. And then we can just pop on a jump ring to each end of the chain. So just threading that on. And then on this side I'm going to add my clasp. So just popping my clasp straight on. So I'm holding my jump ring with one of my pairs of pliers nice and still. So nice and still there. And then I'm going to grab hold of the other part of the jump ring and I'm going to wiggle it back and I can feel that jump ring grip and I can just give it a little squish on top of that. And I know that jump ring is fully closed and it's not going to open and I'm not going to lose any part of my um, necklace. So that's one side done. And again with the other side, all I'm going to do is pass this through and just add a jump ring to the other side. So levelling those up and picking up my jump ring and picking up both ends of my chain and again holding one side really still so it's usually a less dominant hand that you're holding still so you're just gripping with that side and then just really nicely closing that and just making sure you feel that grip as those come together and like I say I usually just give it a little squish over the top and just make sure there's nothing there that can catch on your clothing or anything. So just taking a look at this you want your chain to sit nicely in those sections there, like so. 
and that's your necklace finish. You can just fasten it and it's ready to be worn. So there you go. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you again in the studio very soon.